I can tell you as a non-boxer who loves martial arts and loves the fighting arts, I've learned so much from the mates like Ryan who have the guts to step into that ring and do it. And trust me, there is no feeling like getting punched in the face. Oh. I can tell you that much. Well, there's this big theme of boxing and boxing star. Kevin Larina is preparing for his first fight in a brand new weight division as he takes on Riyad Mary early in May. Mm, and he's going to be looking to bounce back from a very close defeat at the hands of Daniel Dubois in this new weight class. And of course, our man on the street Michael Pedro caught up with Lorena ahead of this must-win clash. Kevin Lorena has been one of South African boxing's brightest stars over the years. Having dominated the cruiserweight division, he's tried his hand as a heavyweight and now is looking forward to a new challenge in the bridgeweight division. His first fight in that weight class will be against Rihad Mehdi on the 13th of May for the right to contest the WBC Bridgeweight title. Kevin is with me this morning as we look forward to that fight. Kevin, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, just in terms of the Bridgeweight division, for people who don't know what that is, can you just give an explanation about sort of where it fits in on the weight classes? So the Bridgeweight division, a new weight division, and the name says it, says it itself, Bridger, which is bridging the gap between cruiserweight and heavyweight. Cruiserweight up to 91, heavyweight above that. Now it's 91 to 101, and that is your Bridgeweight division. You ventured into the heavyweight division last year against Daniel Dubois. It didn't really go as planned, but what are some of the lessons you can take from that experience that you could potentially use on the 13th of May? Well, when you knock a guy down three times, uh, don't leave it up to the ref or the, bo the Boxing Board of Control officials. And also, when you got a man hurt, finish him. We know that a heavyweight's a very dangerous man, especially a hurt heavyweight's a dangerous man. Peter always says that uh, a hurt fighter is a dangerous fighter, and I let him off the hook. But there's lots to, to gain from that. You know, I hadn't lost in eight years, so I had to learn how to lose again, and it almost ignites a different type of fire within you. So uh, onwards and upwards we go, and it was a good learning curve. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you learn. I think the pressure is always there when you kind of like at the top or at the pinnacle, you always put pressure upon yourself to do well and, and to not let your supporters down and your fans down. So to be fair, the pressure never really goes, whether it's at Tottenham Stadium or South African Empress Palace. I'm proud of my country and I'm very patriotic. So I want to do well for my country and do well for myself. So for me, it's irrelevant where it is. The pressure is always high because the stakes are high and also the opportunity to succeed is there. So we just need to work hard and work hard under pressure and diamonds are cut from immense pressure and that's just the mentality that I have. In terms of your opponent on the 13th, Riyad Mehdi, how much do you know about him? What are you expecting from him? And what are some of the weaknesses that you think you can exploit on the night? I know lots about Riyad Mehdi. We were meant to fight each other in 2021 for the WBA Cruiserweight World title and unfortunately I snapped my ECU tendon in training so the fight was called off. Riyad's a good competitor. He's got a very similar record to me, a very similar size to me. I think his record, if I'm not mistaken, is 31 wins, one loss, and I'm 30 fights, two losses. So we've got a very similar record, and um, he's a good competitor. He's strong, he's tenacious, he's quite explosive, and it's going to make a good fight. And you know, a lot of people have said you could have taken an easier route and, and had a, an easier comeback fight after a loss, but that's not what boxing is about. The best need to fight the best in order to reach the pinnacle, and that's what I've always advocated for and always wanted to do, was fight the best and test myself against the best and we're doing that. I do definitely think I'm within my peak now because heavyweights do peak a lot later than the lighter weight divisions, so they say. And obviously I turned pro at 18, 19 years old, but I had no amateur experience before that. So the first three to five years of my professional career was a learning phase for me. So I definitely think I've got another four years of good, hard, strong, competitive boxing. The fitness is there, the dedication is there, the mindset is there. And obviously we just got to keep the spring in the step there to keep going. Kevin, if you were to win the WBC title further down the line, what would that mean to you? And how much of a propellant would that be for you to then get back into the heavyweight division? It's a huge propellant because um, I would only then be the third South African to win uh, the WBC green and gold. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, Sugar Boy Luke Malinga and uh, Dinga Antobela, who were the last two holders of the WBC green and gold. And they are legends of South African boxing. And if I could cement myself in that type of uh, era or in hold myself amongst those names, then I've done well for my country and well for myself. So it's just another opportunity to solidify and, uh, and attempt to achieve greatness.
Oh, he's see, a lovely guy. Oh, but he's a bad man. <laughs> seeing that doesn't give doesn't that give you the urge to get into the ring? Oh, it definitely does. That's <laughs> the problem with with boxing. It's kind of like golf. Doesn't matter how badly you get beaten, you always want to go back for more. But looking at that fight against Dubois, I don't know how Kevin lost that. His time is coming, Kev. We love you, buddy. Thank you for flying that South African flag, bro.